you know that when you walk into a court or aware of a, the, the witness box or the witness stand when someone walks in and, and swears an oath on the Bible in order to, to speak the truth and the whole truth, they, they swear an oath. There's one of these things that sits in the court. So one would assume that if a Bible is in the court, then there must have some sort of biblical um, connection to the Bible, to what's going on. So a lot of people that ignore the Bible and say, oh, the Bible means nothing in law. And, you know, why would it be sitting in the courts? So, so the system of government, governance that we have must have some relation to these books. But we have, from what we've discovered, or from what we seem to be discovering, there seems to be a quasi-Christian system, a system that is made to look a bit like the Bible, look a bit like the um, a true system, look like true Bibles in the court, but may very well be some sort of a, um, a hoax system or a, or a deception or some form of a lie. And um, so that's what I was just going to point out today is that there's two Bibles here. This is the King James Version, the later one. And um, this is the version that is kept in, in the, the courts. This is a Jerusalem Bible. Uh, this is not the one that's in the courts. But there's a difference between this Bible and this Bible. This one has got the Lord, the God, removed. It doesn't exist in there. It's taken out. This one grammatically still remains. The Lord God of Yahweh is still in this Bible, but it's not in here. But even though when you open this Bible up and read it and see for yourself, um, you, will, you will see it. You will read the, the Lord God. You will read the writing. But in, a, in grammatical terms, at the beginning, beginning of every um, chapter and paragraph, the first words are all symbolised. Thus thee, now thee, and Adam. You can see in this book that the first words, first two words, have been written in, a, in an all uppercase text, which is a symbolic text or a, an Egyptian hieroglyphic text, which is not English and has no um, correspondence with the rest of the English writing in this book. So even though you can see it there, the word has been grammatically removed. Not only does it say, and the, which is in all uppercase text, but everywhere where the Lord has been written, it is also in a smaller all uppercase text, which is which again it separates it again from the rest of the text. But they've capitalized the capital L on Lord. So that the Lord the, the L on Lord is a larger Lord. And then the ORD is smaller case, but a, a smaller font size, but all uppercase text. Which is a which is a corruption of the text. So, from the point of a lay person or someone that is grammatically ignorant to the, the grammatical standing of texts and everything, which is the science of English really, the King James Version has had the Lord grammatically removed from it. Not only is the Lord, the first two words of the um, text of every paragraph has also been removed which really questions um, the intention of why this particular 
version of the Bible sits in the courts. So if you walk into the courts and you believe that you're having a very unfair trial or an unfair uh, look, you're being treated unfairly in the courts. The reason is because when you swear on this Bible, you swear on a Bible that is grammatically corrupted and had the Lord removed it, removed from it. So you're swearing an oath to something that is not God, not existing. Now, I don't mean to be um, against God in this, but in a grammatical sense, um, you have to be very careful because the deceivers that um, that operate this quasi-Christian Judeo system uh, may very well um, intentionally be doing it, but they will stop at no length to maintain such a fraud against the, the people of the world. Uh, this is the Jerusalem Bible and the Lord Yahweh, God, is all written in the main part of the text in proper English. So it all has correspondence. The only glosses are in the marginal text as where they should be, which the glosses or the, um, the all uppercase hieroglyphic text is stating that it is not part of the text. So no glosses should appear within the text itself. It should remain in the margins. Whereas this version of the Bible, the glosses are also usurped in between the, um, are usurped within the paragraphs and within the context of, of the book itself. So that's just a, um, a, another clue on just how deep and deceptive this new one world government or one world or new world order really is in relation to getting you to become the debtor, is to trick you from being a part of, um, a part of the land, a part of your footprint. Your footprint to the land has been um, legally removed from you through a deception that even extends to removing the Lord and God and Yahweh from the very Bible that you try and gain some sort of protection from when you're in a court. That's pretty, pretty sad. There's a warning in the back of these two Bibles because the text is still, still correct. The meaning of that is still there, but grammatically it's been corrupted. But in the back, there's a warning on the last few lines of these books that if you remove or add anything to these books, then you're in trouble. And all I could say is the one world government and the, the new world order and their corrupt system um, can only come to no good and can only come to an end. Because if they've tried to deceive even the very books, then the warnings are all here. They have a limited lifespan. So that's the, um, that's the, the corruption in the Bibles.